So as a student, you understand the inherent value of your college education. And every student I ever come across, myself included, has, understand that, has understood that inherent value. Yet despite knowing this and being excited about the possibilities that a college education offers, as students, you're also really good at asking why questions. Questions like, why do I have to take math? Why do I have to read so much and take all these English classes? And why do I have to write extensi extensively? And why do I have to study philosophy and physical science and biology and political science and history and economics? These questions often get framed as complaints. Students complaining about, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. But I don't really see these questions as complaints. I think these are really good why questions. Why questions are powerful and they're productive because they give meaning to what we're doing. And I think as we hear these why questions so often, it's really just students asking for meaning, asking for more purpose in what they're doing. So my goal today is to help you understand the answers to these why questions. But I want to do this through a lesson that I learned from the student athletes, the freshman student athletes at Utah State University a couple years ago. I was asked to come and speak to them, to talk to them about becoming a learner, to talk to them about taking advantage of their education and doing their best and not missing out on the opportunities of their learning. But instead of just going in and telling them what it was that I wanted them to know, I decided to test the importance of understanding why you do what you do. So I asked them questions about what it meant to become an athlete and what it took to reach their level of competition and why they did all the little things they did every day in their exercise and conditioning. Now part of my reason for doing this is because I am not by any stretch of the imagination an athlete. Right? I'm skinny and I'm slow and I can't jump very high and my little league prowess consisted of picking dandelions in right field with my mitt on my head and running slow behind everybody in a basketball game. So as much as I love sports and I love watching sports, I am not an athlete. And so I began asking them questions. Why do you do what you do? So I started, why do you do squats? I did squats once in college with my roommate who was a physical education major. And it was a painful, painful experience during and after because I couldn't walk upstairs for weeks without pain in my legs. I said, why would you do this? I've never seen any field of competition where an athlete put weight on his or her shoulders and then bent down to where the thighs were parallel to the floor and come back up again with as heavy a weight as possible. I've never seen that in football, never seen that in basketball, track, volleyball, anything. Why would you do that? Immediately the hands shoot up. The offensive lineman says, I need to have thrust and push as I'm blocking on the line, right? And the soccer players are talking about being able to, to run and have bursts of speed, and they immediately knew this is why we do squats, although they recognized that those squats were difficult, that they were hard and they weren't very pleasant. I said, okay, what about the bench press? What about the bench press? Why do you, nobody lays down on a baseball field and lifts weight as much as they can as many times or as heavy as possible once. Why would you do that? And immediately, right, the softball players know that that strengthening of the shoulders and the arms and the chest help you throw. Volleyball players, the bump set and the spike and shooting a basket and pushing and pulling on defense and offense, all of those things, they understood that. Same thing with lat pull downs. Why would you do that? There's no machines on a sport field. You go up and down, make yourself strong. Again, the same answers come out. Then I asked them about running. I said, why do you run for an hour straight? What's the point? And I said, what's the point, volleyball players? You don't move 15 feet in any direction farther than that in any game. Softball players, why do you do that? You only run 90 feet at a time. Offensive and defensive linemen, you don't run anywhere, right? You push and you block and then you walk down to the next play and you go. Why do you do that? And they say, we got to have conditioning. We got to have strong lungs. We got to be able to play as hard in the fourth quarter as we did in the first quarter. We need stamina and running gets, gets us there. And then I asked them about stretching. Why do you stretch? What's the point? Just go play ball. Down there and do all these contortions. Like, I don't get it. Why do you do that? And they talk about staying healthy and not pulling muscles and doing all of these things. And they started to get really annoyed with my questions, even though I was bantering with them in a, in a good-natured way. But they were getting a little bit frustrated. Like, these are obvious answers, you skinny, non-athletic person. Just stop bugging us with these questions. And I was really impressed with how quickly 
and how accurately and how articulately they knew these reasons why. They knew why they did these things and they knew that they were hard and they knew that they were sometimes even unpleasant. They knew that they weren't things they did in a game, but they knew why it connected. They knew why it connected to specific in-game skills and abilities. And I thought it was just a wonderful way to think about the, the power of understanding why you do what you do. And as I thought about this, it just came together that the purpose of all that exercise and conditioning for an athlete is to be able to thrive and flourish on a field of athletic competition. That's what they want. They want to be able to thrive regardless of the competition or the conditions, and they want to flourish. They want to adapt and change and overcome. And all of that exercise and conditioning helps them get there. It helps them thrive and flourish as an athlete. The same thing, I believe, holds true for your general education as well as your major. Just as athletes need that ability to thrive and flourish based on these things, the answers to those why questions lie in thriving and flourishing as a human being. Why do we do so much math? Why do we write so much? Why do we read so much in so many ways? Why do we do all of these things? And these questions get boiled down in ways of, why do I have to do things I don't really care about? And why do I have to do things that I'm not going to use in a job? The why questions are boiled down to that. But if you think about it in terms of this comparison to athletic training, this is what you're doing. Math creates a mind that can think in a different language and think in abstract ways and problem solve. And the extensive writing and presentations that you'll give throughout your general education are going to help you communicate ideas and think and synthesize complex things and be able to portray them in an accessible way. We study philosophy and history and economics and science so that we can learn broadly and solve problems that are complex. And all of these things are enabling you to have a foundation to thrive. And they enable you to become a learner, to become the kind of person that can thrive and flourish regardless of the career you choose, the life you live, and the circumstances in which you pursue whatever activity you want to in your life. That's really what all of this general education is doing for you. Now these are the answers. In one sense it seems simple, but at the same time, <clears throat> that those answers get obscured because somewhere along the way, we've been convinced as individuals and as a society that your primary purpose for going to college is just to get a set of job skills. That that's why you're there. Get some skills and go get a job. But that's not what college is about. It's not what it's about now. It's not what it's been about in the past, and it's not what it will be about in the future. Your primary purpose in coming to college and getting your degree, and particularly this general education liberal arts core that you have in every single degree, over half of your degree is going to be in that, is designed to help you learn how to thrive and flourish. And even within your major, they're not preparing you to operate independently within that career. They're teaching you how to learn and think in that discipline. That's why you get a broad education even within your major. And this was illustrated to me by a, a story I heard from a very successful high-tech executive named Peter Barrett. And he worked for IBM for a long career and then at the end of his career he started a company in Colorado called Exabyte. And he took Exabyte from zero revenue to $386 million in revenue in five years. He was very successful and I was sitting in an auditorium listening to him with a whole bunch of undergraduate students and he stood up there and he said, don't sweat the technical stuff, the job stuff that you might learn in your majors. I thought that was really odd advice coming from an engineer. I thought it was really strange advice. And he started talking to them about learning a language and understanding cultures and studying history and doing all of these broad educational things that matter. In addition to, yeah, learn the stuff that's important to your major, but that's not what's really important. And then he told this story which really just astounded me. I thought it was a great story, a great illustration. He started his engineering career around 1960 in electronic data storage. Okay, electronic data storage in 1960 was just a brand new technology. And he said, okay, I started then, it's 2005, how, much, how many times has that space shrunk that we have to use to store data electronically? 
How many times has that space shrunk over that period of time? Students offered their answers, a thousand, no, a million, somebody says, and the answer was a billion. One billion times. So it used to take this whole hall to store electronically, now sits on your keychain, hooked onto that little plastic thing, and the only reason you have it on your keychain is so you don't lose what sits on the tip of your finger. So you can't haul that around. And what he said was, whatever I learned about that in college was not that important. I needed to learn to think like an engineer, and I needed to learn how to problem solve, and I needed to learn how to deal with people. And it was his education that took him through the changes over and over and over in his career. If you think about that kind of change, it's not the technical stuff. It was his ability to be a learner, to adapt, to thrive, and to flourish in his career. And it's not just his career, but in his life. So, to wrap up, just as an athlete does all of these exercises, the training and conditioning to thrive and flourish in athletic competition, that's how I want you to see your general education, the liberal arts core of every college degree and even your major. It's developing you, it's training you, it's stretching you, and it sometimes is hard and it's challenging and it pushes you and it drives you, but that's its purpose, to mold you in the kind, into the kind of person that can do whatever you want, wherever you want, and be successful. That's what college offers you and that's your opportunity. I hope you take advantage of it. Thank you.